sometimes at night, I can hear it. I can hear it while lying in bed all the way in the living room. And it is one of the many things that I dislike about this hobby. A big howdy howdy to all of my fellow and future hobbyists out there. My name is Matthew. I'm your BRS beginner guru. There are just some things that really bug me about this hobby. Put a comment below and tell me what bugs you about the saltwater aquarium hobby so we can all commiserate together. The hard algae in the corners of your tanks. You can't get it off. It's impossible to get off. You can use a flipper cleaner, a magnetic algae scraper, and it will get off everywhere else. But for some reason, you put that algae scraper into the corner and you can't get it off. And the only way to get it off is either to get a handheld scraper, which can be kind of a pain in the butt, or to get out a razor blade and scrape it off. I just like tiny fonts, and I'm not gonna say the name of the company that is the worst at this because I love this company, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. I am not as young as I once was, and my eyes can no longer read fonts that are like, I don't know, number three or number four size. They are so small. Now, I'm sure this one isn't universally true, and I'm gonna be proved wrong because I'm sure there are some good ones out there, but I really dislike protein skimmer assembly instructions. They're the worst, like the worst, like so bad. Here's a picture of one of the most recent ones I had to put together. I mean, how is, how is anybody, how is any beginner supposed to figure out exactly how this works? There's just a diagram and some really loosely worded instructions. It is impossible to figure out. And even though I knew what I was doing, it still took me forever. And there was like one extra part at the end. I have no idea what this does. And I just put it back in the box and I put the box on the shelf. Number four on the list, I hate, okay, I'm really trying not to say hate because I don't hate these things. I dislike blue colored coral pictures. I'm not saying I don't like blue corals, but I can't stand it because these phones that we use all the times, if we take them under blue lights, they just turn out blue. Yeah, you can put some sort of clip on there, but you can't change the white balance on these phones. So, so many pictures you see all over the internet are these beautiful corals that you can't tell what their colors are because it is completely washed out in blue. Let's see here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have to change 11 filter socks twice a week and I dislike it very much. Having to wring it out, where do you put them in the meantime? Oftentimes I get crud on the ground, oftentimes I get some drips of salt water that go down the outside of my tank, then I gotta put them in a bucket, the bucket sinks, I gotta wash them. Oh, it is so unpleasant, but so necessary. Can you hear it? Can you hear it right now? Normally you can't hear it, because during editing, I edit out this sound. That is the sound of AC pumps. It is so annoying. I have replaced almost every single pump in here with DC pumps whenever I could, but I have a protein skimmer, HOB right over there that has an AC pump, and I have one reactor that I use an AC pump, and I can still hear the vibrations. But I really dislike know-it-alls in this hobby. Not know-it-alls as people, just the idea that there are people in this hobby that have all the answers, that think that they are right 100% of the time. There is nobody in this hobby that has it all figured out. Number eight on the list, I dislike messy rear filtration chambers. I love all-in-one systems. I have one, three all-in-one systems, and they're fantastic for beginners, but all of the gear is held in the back, and especially if you add certain things in there, like an auto top-off unit, or in this one, I put a reactor, and I didn't get like a low form reactor. I just put a reactor on top of it. It looks so messy. You can stare at your tank, and it's so beautiful, and then all of a sudden, your eyes are transported to the rear filtration chamber that is a mess. I don't like wires. I don't like them. I don't wanna see wires when I am staring at my tank, and most of the time, I can hide them. But there are just some times, like I can see right here, there's a couple wires down there, and there's a couple wires down there, and I try to hide them so much. But seeing wires for me just destroys that clean aesthetic of a tank. Oh, tiny frags, tiny frags. I do not like tiny frags. I get everybody needs to make money in this hobby, so we do smaller and smaller frags. But I mean, come on, you're gonna sell me one Zoa polyp? I mean, like, like one polyp? How about we just let it grow out a little bit more and sell me two, maybe even three. Number 11 on the list, I really dislike taking vacations. Now that's not true. I love going on vacation, but when you have five tanks, it is such a pain in the butt to go on vacations. I mean, you will experience this 
Because who's going to feed your fish? Who's going to do the water changes? If something goes wrong, how will you know it? So whenever you go on vacation with a saltwater tank, especially if you have fish that need to be fed a lot, like, like my seahorses over here, I have to hire somebody to come in and take care of my tanks. So where I thought, oh, it's going to be a really fun vacation. I'm going to go on a seven-day carnival cruise to the Mexican Riviera. And then all I'm doing is I'm stressing about it. I'm going to use the word hate for this one. I, I, I know. I know. It's strong. But it's stronger than dislike. I hate livestock loss during shipping. Let's just imagine for a sec that you're like, I'm going to buy a brand new kitten. So cute, love it, excited, beautiful animal. And you're going to ship it. It arrives to you and it's dead. And you're like, oh, this sucks. It's dead. And all you do, you throw it in the trash and then you order a brand new kitten and that one comes to you alive. I mean, I get it. Our relationship with fish is much different than our relationship with kittens, especially in this country. But I really feel like we have gotten way too okay with the amount of livestock loss that happens. Some of these animals can live for so many years. And could you imagine, could you imagine being put into a box and slowly dying inside a bag of tiny amounts of water in the pitch darkness? It is awful. And, and I hate thinking about that so much. And I don't have an answer to it, but I really dislike livestock loss during shipping. Random livestock death. So frustrating. The most recent experience I had of this was a seahorse. No idea why the seahorse died. I sent pictures of it to my seahorse experts, I took videos of it. They couldn't see any problem with the body. I did all the water testing. I mean, this tank is immaculately set up for them and we just couldn't figure it out. And maybe it was just that seahorse's time to die. I dislike how there is never a simple answer to anything. But I mean, come on, if you have green hair algae for the first time in your tank and then literally try to figure out how to get rid of green hair algae. Good luck. There are so many different answers and so many different opinions and so many different products out there that it is incredibly frustrating. And I just wish there were more things in this hobby that we had figured out and down to a science so we could give straight up answers. But sometimes that's just not possible because every tank is different. I only have one. I only have one. And that little one right over there is an aggressive clownfish. And I dislike aggressive clownfish. Luckily, that clownfish is small. But the first time he bit me, it scared the crap all out of me. It's like, oh, and I was like, oh my God, am I bleeding? No, his mouth is tiny. But every single time I put my hand into that tank to pick up a frag or to adjust something, he's hovering there, he's hovering there. And the moment he sees an opportunity, he just goes right after the hand and it scares me <laughs> every time. Oh, right over here, it is incredibly frustrating trying to tune a Herbie Overflow with only a ball valve. If you've never experienced this, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but if you have, you know that in order to make a Herbie Overflow system silent, the water level has to be above the primary drain, but below the overflow drain. And sometimes that's a very small area. And if you are using a ball valve to adjust this, oftentimes, literally a centimeter of adjustment will make the water rise four inches in that rear chamber and you can't get it tuned right. And my advice to you, if you're setting up your own tank or if you're gonna buy a system, get one that comes with a gate valve because gate valves are so much easier to tune silently in a Herbie system. I just like the smell of skimmate. That is the fish poop, 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 and waste and decaying matter that collects in your skimmer cup. It should smell, and if it doesn't smell, your skimmer's probably not doing a good job. But the first time you pull that little top open, if you're not holding your breath, whoo, it is nasty. Why aren't saltwater aquarium lights at least water resistant. Do manufacturers know that we are putting these over our tanks and that water will probably splash or worst case scenario you drop it in? Now I'm not saying that lights need to be waterproof. Of course a manufacturer shouldn't be expected to prevent the lights from going bad when they're submerged in water. But I mean this is a saltwater aquarium and it's probably going to be splashing at some point. Lights without mounts. Okay I get it. I get why some manufacturers do not include mounting options with the lights because they think, hey, we wanna give people the option. We don't wanna say you have to use this mount. You can use this mount or this mount or a ceiling mount, whatever you want. But I mean, come on. The vast majority of people would just use the standard mount and certainly any beginner would use the standard mount. And a beginner is probably just gonna get frustrated when they pay several hundred dollars for an LED fixture, don't even realize they need a mount. It gets in and they're like, what? Now, now what do I do? How do I? mount this, and then they figure out that they had to buy a $60 mount on top of everything. Just include one mounting option with the light. It would make people so much happier. My final pet peeve, the thing I dislike about this hobby, 
Why are there so many dudes in the hobby? I mean, honestly, when I look at the analytics for my YouTube channel, it's like 95% men. Now that means obviously I'm doing something wrong, that I'm not appealing to more women. But when I go to trade shows and I go to different meetings, it's always like 90% guys. And it doesn't have to be guys. This is such a good hobby. We need to do a better job to invite more women into this hobby. So that's on us. That's not on you guys but it's definitely a pet peeve of mine. The things I love in this hobby vastly, vastly, vastly outweigh my pet peeves and the things I dislike about that hobby. All the things I love about this hobby, we will put a link right there. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing, be well. We'll see you next time.